testimony is. And look what he says. God's testimony is. That is the testimony. That is the thing. You know, it's like we had to hear a word that we're beautiful to God because we're so busy thinking we're ugly to God. That's right. But hearing that I'm beautiful to God can't raise me up unto eternal life. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and listen, what's crazy is in, in the church, people come to know the Lord and you have eternal life now. But then that's the end of it. We're going to forget about that and we're going to move on to bigger and better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm very excited about all this. Yeah. And I'm very excited about what all this talking about eternal life and how death is going to, has been conquered. What it's going to do inside of all yes. of our hearts. Yes. And everything that the Lord is going to be like quickening inside of all of us. And you should all just give utterance to it. You know, because th this is the testimony of God. Maurice just quoted. Listen, yeah. Yeah. John is one of my favorite authors. John said, and this is the testimony of God. Boom. And so th that's the thing we really want to be busy with is the testimony of God. Yes. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Which is that he has come to give us life and conquer death that was reigning over us. Actually, I thought it was how are we going to live, you know, live up to the Sermon on the Mount. <laughs> <laughs> Now I see Jesus just notice what he said. Unless your righteousness exceedeth the righteousness of the Pharisees. Yeah. So then Jesus gets busy describing the way eternal life manifests itself in the Sermon on the Mount. He wasn't giving us a commandment to perform that. He was talking about what happens when a person becomes stung by life and becomes a servant to righteousness. The, the terminology is important there. You become a servant to righteousness, meaning righteousness is reigning over you, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that righteousness demands something from you when you go and perform it. It means you can't help but do it. Because if righteousness isn't reigning over you, then you can remove yourself from it and say, no, I won't do that, right? And so Jesus says, unless the, unless the life that manifests out of you exceeds the life that's manifesting out of the Pharisees, then you haven't believed on God. And so what Jesus was describing was what happens to a person when they're stung by eternal life. This is what it will give birth to. Should someone smack you in the face, yeah. he'll turn the other cheek. Should someone do this, you won't be offended. Should someone do that, it won't move you. See, he's describing the way the life of God manifests. Yeah. And then he says, be thou perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. <laughs> now, he also told Abraham, walk before me. And then, that is where perfection is defined. And so we, sit, we hear, be thou perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And we think that's telling us to now go get this life right, right. Go produce this life through your own ability. Then grab all the things you've done. Come to God with them. And then say, look, am I perfect now like you? No, no. When Jesus is saying, be thou perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, he's talking about and referring to the same thing God said to Abraham. 